Globalization. What does it mean to the average business leader or manager? Globalization is a social, cultural, political, and legal phenomenon for the following reasons. Socially, it leads to greater interaction among various populations, Facebook friends from all over the world. Culturally, globalization represents the exchange of ideas, values, and artistic expression among cultures. Think of the British invasion of musical acts in the 1960s. Politically, globalization has shifted attention to intergovernmental organizations like the United Nations and the World Trade Organization. And finally, legally, globalization has altered how international law is created and enforced. The challenge today as a global leader manager is how do I compete in this new world that I may not fully understand or even embrace? Many people think a company is a global business because it sells its product or services with consistency in all countries. For example, is a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese the same all over the world? What about Coke? Does it taste the same all over the world? What about a pair of Levi jeans? It is possible the definition of globalization is focused on the wrong concept, products and services, but not markets. Those three products have been altered to fit whatever market they are in, not making the market conform to them. As the reading will highlight, the world operates in a state of semi-globalization, not globalization. In other words, semi-globalization means both the force of globalization and localization are taking place at the same time in the same market. The chapter highlighted Walmart, but I want to bring attention to another large corporation who had a strategy to go international, Home Depot. The company decided to launch in Argentina by building four stores, no joint venture. The strategy was to replicate what was successful in the United States and do it in Argentina and Chile. Only one problem. Neither country had the culture uh, to fix things yourself. Do it yourself isn't particularly common among the middle class in South America, where handymen, many of whom are in the informal economy, are called on to do most of the home repair. Large home improvement centers are scarce, with the vast majority of supplies being bought in small, specialized shops or the hypermarkets sprouting up around the region. After three years, Home Depot closed its stores because they failed to understand the need to localize their offering. Successful companies are those who fully understand how to incorporate the best attributes from their home market and the best attributes from their new foreign market in order to create a product or service that can generate everlasting sales activity. Since the end of World War II, the perspective has been for developed countries to expand their business opportunities to developing and or emerging markets. Four of those markets were Brazil, Russia, India, and China, or as they are known as BRIC. Two of these countries, China and India, have impacted the global competitive markets, manufacturing in China, services in India. Today, we see business activity flowing both directions as companies in these countries gain more and more economic presence. This is evidenced by the fact that the number of companies from BRIC is steadily increasing due in part to their acquisition of Western companies. The global marketplace used to be a playground for only companies from the developed countries. But today, with the rise of BRIC and other countries, global business opportunities and threats exist equally for all. Now, you may think the company you are working for is not under any global threat as it just serves customers in the Minnesota area or maybe even the Dakotas or Western Wisconsin. While the reading suggests the five factors are for companies who want to become more global, these factors also apply to those who want to make sure they do not face global market pressure in their domestic market. For example, knowledge. Many products are initially launched in other markets before launching in a key large market. As a business leader or manager, you want to know if there's other products 
or a service is being launched in a market that could be a competitor to your market. Knowledge about the global expansion plans of one of your key customers and will you service them if they expand globally? Understand your company may not be expanding, but your suppliers, customers, and competitors may be, so it is imperative for you to understand how globalization affects you. Do you work for a global corporation? The reading states it best in that a global company does not mean a geographical presence, but is defined in four ways. Market presence, supply base, capital base, corporate mindset. It is the last one that really sets companies apart. For example, I worked for a number of years for a company where I helped to grow its international presence across the globe. In fact, we had a saying, the sun never sets on our global empire. While the international vision of the company had a global mindset, it became obvious there were those in the senior executive leadership team at the corporate headquarters who did not have the same mindset. Within three years, they were able to sell all of the international properties from Australia, South America, Asia, and Europe, despite the significant revenue and profit contributions provided by those international operations. What drove the actions of these senior executives? Fear of the unknown. As the reading indicates, there is a great reward for global expansion, but there is also great risk. We were active in countries with medium to high risk, especially in the areas of corruption and economic uncertainty. They were senior executive leaders who were not comfortable with the political, legal, financial, social, cultural risk associated with being a global company. Shortly after the sale of all the international operations and with a slowing domestic financial prospect, the company was acquired. Of the four ways, the corporate mindset is the most important. Even if 0% of revenues come from international operations, there is still a need to understand how the world is changing around and its impact on you, professionally and personally. In closing Chapter 1 of DeCliver, remember, globalization revolves around four phenomena, social, cultural, political, and legal. It could be easy for one to put their head in the sand and not want to compete in a global world. Unfortunately, with the technological advances that have occurred and will continue to occur, that is not an option anymore. For most business leaders and managers, all of us must learn, whether we want to or not, how to compete in an ever-changing global business environment. Mm-hmm.